Good evening, and welcome to this community meeting update on the North Trunk Sewer Replacement Project in the Chenet and Mendocino area of Santa Rosa. My name is Eric Rauber, Supervising Engineer with the City of Santa Rosa Transportation and Public Works Department, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Before we begin the presentation, I will ask our Zoom host, Lauren Wiley, Senior Administrative Assistant with the City of Santa Rosa, to explain how the meeting will work. Thank you, Eric. As members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Eric will open up the meeting for public questions and comment. Thank you, Lauren. Tonight, after introducing our presenters, we will briefly review the purpose and scope of the project, provide an overview of construction progress, take a look at what construction activity is coming next, including a significant detour starting May 17th, talk about the fire season and emergency access, and conclude with your questions and comments. Next slide, please. At this time, I'd like to introduce tonight's presenters. Again, I'm Eric Robert, facilitator for tonight's meeting. And you have already met Lauren Wiley, who will host tonight's meeting, along with Mary Lou Nichols, administrative secretary, who will be our co-host. They will coordinate the logistics and question and answer portion of the meeting. From the City of Santa Rosa Transportation and Public Works, we have the City's Project Manager, Greg Dwyer. Also presenting tonight is Mike Van Mitty, Traffic Engineer with the City of Santa Rosa. I'll now turn the meeting over to Greg. Thank you, Eric. Many of you are already familiar with the project from the previous two public meetings. But to be sure tonight's attendees are all on the same page, I'm gonna just briefly summarize the project. The North Trunk Sewer serves a large area of Northeast Santa Rosa, which is assessed from Sinead Road, Parker Hill Road, and Terra Linda Drive. Over the years, stream bank erosion along Pollen Creek has exposed parts of the sewer line. Due to the age and location of the North Trunk sewer alignment, inspection and maintenance of the trunk main is both challenging and costly. Therefore, the project's relocating the sewer alignment away from Pollen Creek to the road right of way. On our graphic here, the green highlighted areas sink delineate areas where the sewer main is being replaced or abandoned, and the blue areas delineate areas where water main replacement work is being performed. New water main will be installed in various parts of Sinead Road, Lamitas Avenue, and Lamitas Lane to both increase and upgrade the existing water system and provide separation from the new sewer main. The project will also relocate 1,950 feet of sewer main located adjacent to Pollen Creek, 1,350 feet of existing sewer main located in Mendocino Avenue and Lamitas Lane. Next slide, please. This photo shows typical open trench construction you may have seen now throughout the project. Trenching is covered with steel plates at the end of each day to facilitate access. Next slide, please. This photo shows typical trenchless construction operations similar to what will be occurring soon on Sinead Road. The large diameter bore pits and construction equipment are required to install the new sewer main at depths of up to 40 feet. The detour is necessary to accommodate this work which will be discussed later in the presentation. 
Next slide, please. This view is looking down into the bore pit and shows typical equipment that will be used to install the new sewer main. Next slide, please. Six of these 14 foot diameter bore pits and equipment will be installed along Sinead Road between Slater Street and Terra Linda Drive, leaving enough room for single lane travel and the subsequent need for a detour. Next slide, please. We're pleased to report out that great progress has been made since construction first began in December. We're about 40% through construction and have already installed new water and sewer mains in Lower Sinead Road, new sewer main in Lamitas Avenue and Plum Drive, and a new water main in Lamitas Lane. Unseasonably dry weather has minimized impacts due to rain delays and also contributed to low groundwater conditions. Next slide, please. Starting May 17th, we will begin staging boring equipment in preparation of the upcoming sewer main installation work in Upper Chenate Road. There will also be sewer work occurring on Lamitas Avenue from May 17th to May 20th, and on the private drive off Lamitas Avenue from May 21st to May 28th, with construction complete in the fall of 2022. I encourage you to visit our project website sewerproject.com, where you can stay up to date on the latest information and subscribe to our weekly email updates. Next slide, please. Parking in construction areas will be tempor temporarily affected. Garbage pickup and mail will not be impacted. The field crews have been great at facilitating access and we've received positive, positive feedback from our community. There will be noise during construction hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Some work may occur on Saturdays. There will be night work on Mendocino Avenue from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the months of September and October to minimize impacts to traffic and to local businesses. At this point, I'd like to hand it over to Mike, to traffic engineer Mike Van Mitty, who will be discussing the upcoming May 17th detour and plans to address emergency access. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Next slide, please. My name is Mike Van Mitty, and I am an associate traffic engineer for the city of Santa Rosa. For those of you on the phone or those unable to make out the details on this map, please visit our project website at shenatesewerproject.com. There you will find the detour map as well as the regular project updates. Work will begin on Monday, May 17th for the new construction operation as Greg described. This operation will introduce new traffic control measures requiring a westbound detour for Sinead Road at Parker Hill Road. As Greg showed earlier in his presentation, this detour is required to accommodate the construction footprint and it will be in place 24 hours a day continuously through September. Detouring one direction of traffic is the least disruptive way to accomplish this work. The detour will apply for all road users. Pedestrians will maintain access on the north side of Sinead Road throughout the detour. This map shows westbound Sinead Road will be closed to all through traffic between Terra Linda Drive and Humboldt Street Belvedere Way. In its place will be a detour that routes traffic, traffic from westbound Sinead Road right to northbound Parker Hill Road, continuing to Stagecoach Road, then left to proceed westbound on Fountain Grove Parkway, then left to go southbound on Mendocino Avenue. Please note that uh, the week of May 17th to May 21st, city crews will also be working on weed abatement maintenance on Fountain Grove Parkway. This may cause additional delay during uh, the first week of the detour. Please give yourself plenty of extra travel time as you navigate through the detour. Next slide, please. 
Signage will guide traffic through the detour. Local traffic accessing Terra Linda Drive, Nielsen Road, and Cobblestone Drive in the westbound direction will be allowed. There will be a full westbound road closure at Terra Linda Drive. Eastbound traffic through the construction zone will be allowed. Drivers will need to exercise caution as large construction equipment and K rail will be in the street. Advanced warning signs will be posted. Please follow all instructions provided tra to traverse through the work zone safely as, condi as conditions can change on a regular basis. Please anticipate longer travel times and if possible, use alternate routes. Next slide, please. I want to talk for a minute about the threat of fire and the possibility of evacuations during this stage of construction. The project team has considered the impacts of the detour and has put into place plans to facilitate emergency evacuations. Contingencies for emergencies have been incorporated into plans that have been shared with the fire department, police department, and public works department. Upon notification from our emergency operations center, construction will be halted and the road open for westbound travel to facilitate evacuations in the area. We encourage you to review the Know Your Ways Out map for your neighborhood. You can visit those at srcity.org slash knowyourwaysout. Rest assured that if an evacuation order calls for westbound Sinead Road travel, that plan will be implemented. And uh, we actually have Sean from Team Gelati. Uh, do you have any comments on this? Uh, yeah, Team Gelati will have all the necessary signs on site and readily available. Um, so we can put those in place immediately once the city directs us to switch to a uh, westbound detour. So we'll have all those signs on site and ready to switch over at a moment's notice. Thank you, Sean. Uh, next slide, please. So as part of the contingencies for emergencies, the emergency vehicle access gate between Terra Linda Drive and Lake Park Drive will be open for local northbound Terra Linda Drive traffic only. This will remain open for the duration of the detour. Next slide, please. In addition, the bollards will be removed between Andy Way and Baldwin Way for local northbound Andy Way traffic only. These will be removed for the duration of the detour. Next slide, please. On the screen now is a map showing the westbound Sinead Road closure and the locations of the emergency access gate and the bollards, which I just mentioned. We, we will answer any questions you may have about the detour and contingencies for evacuation during the question and answer period shortly. And at this time, I'd like to turn it back over to Eric. Thank you, Mike and Greg. A quick reminder regarding schedule. There are many factors that can impact the project schedule, including inclement weather and unanticipated subsurface conditions that may be encountered during the work. The dates presented are currently our best estimate. We will continue to provide schedule updates through the project website and weekly emails. At this time, we would like to address your questions. So we will ne next, we will move to the question and answer portion of the meeting. Before we begin, joining Greg and Mike to field your questions and comments, I'd like to introduce Sean Durenberger with Team Gelati, the project general contractor, Tom Gorman, our construction manager with Kennedy Jenks, and Scott Moon, the fire marshal from the City of Santa Rosa Fire Department. I will now ask Lauren to review how the public can participate asking live questions and comments. Thank you, Eric. Once the facilitator has called for public questions or comments, our co-host Mary Lou will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals wishing to participate in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. You can also type your question into the chat function on the Zoom screen. 
The co-host will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. The co-host will unmute your microphone so you may ask your question. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so our panelists may respond to your question. Mary Lou, are we ready for the first meeting attendee to ask their question or provide a comment? Yes, we are. Thank you, Eric. Anyone wishing to ask a question or make a comment may do so at this time by raising your hand in Zoom. If you're calling in, please dial star nine to raise your hand or type into the chat sidebar. Our first speaker tonight is Jeremy Nichols, followed by Susan Dickey. Jeremy, I've enabled your permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and ask your question or make your comment. Good evening. My name is Jeremy Nichols. I am president of the Bird Rescue Center at 3430 Sinead Road. I simply want to note that we're still there and that this is our busiest time of year. We have on the order of a dozen employees and volunteers on site during daylight hours and an average of at least 20 persons coming to the center to bring us birds. We are aware of the project and we will work with all of our people, including the public, to make sure they understand how they can get to us and get back to Mendocino through the detour. We simply want you to be aware of the volume of traffic that we have at this time of year. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Mary our Lee, next another raised hand. Yes, our next speaker is Susan Dickey. Susan, I've enabled your permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Yes, hi, thank you. Susan Dickey. I live in Chenate Village, um, the condominiums close to Mendocino. Um, it looks like on the map, the westbound Chenate Road detour map, that the um, detour goes all the way to Mendocino, but it didn't sound like when it was described that it was that. Does it stop at Humboldt and Belvedere or is Sinead itself from Humboldt Belvedere down to Mendocino Avenue going to only be one direction? Thank you, Susan. Um, Mike, could you answer Susan's questions? Yeah, thank you, Susan. Uh, you are correct. The the detour applies only between Terra Linda and uh, Humboldt and uh, Belvedere. So between Mendocino and Humboldt and Belvedere, there will be two-way traffic throughout. Great, thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Calvin Johnson. Calvin, I've enabled your permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Uh, thank you. My name is Calvin H. Johnson. I have two questions. Um, right now, at the junction of Franklin, Lewis, and Crest Roads, uh, there's a stop sign, a five-way stop, I think it is. Um, will there be a temporary traffic light put there? Because I noticed as this goes into effect, the traffic is really, really backs up as people just stop. That's my first question. And my second question is, uh, I appreciate all the information about evacuations, but I wondered, will construction be halted on red flag days? Thank you, Calvin. Uh, is Mike, can you answer that first question? Maybe Greg can tackle the second. Yeah, thank you, Calvin. The, um... There is not a plan to put in a temporary signal at the intersection you mentioned, and we do understand that there will be significant impacts with uh, drivers using that intersection more so than um, the, the Sinead and Humboldt intersection. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, it'll, it will cause uh, some additional delays, and so I encourage you to uh, make sure you give yourself plenty of time to, uh, to travel through the area. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Gina Richmond. Oh, excuse me. I think, I think Calvin had another 
I had another question. Question, yeah. Great. Uh, uh, yeah, will construction be halted on red flag days? And yes. this is Greg Dwyer, the, 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 I'm sorry, Eric, go ahead. No, go ahead, Craig. I'm Greg Dwyer, the, the project engineer uh, for this project. And we will follow all the direction of the city fire department in re regarding red flag days. Um, the, the work that's being performed is within a confined area where they'll be lowering, lowering equipment down into the bore pit with little to no risk of fire. Uh, the crews do have uh, fire extinguishers and so forth on hand, um, but it will, it will depend on you know, the, the current conditions of what's going on, but that's certainly something that, that we are considering as well. Yeah, I, I think in answer to Calvin's questions, uh, work you know, will, will halt if there's any uh, emergency of any kind, uh, depending on the nature of the red flag warning. Um, it, it, uh, it may or may not, but uh, certainly with any inkling of, of, a, of an emergency situation, construction will cease and will go into a, uh, uh, a mode of, of, uh, of providing the, the best access we can. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker is Gina Richman. Gina, I've enabled your permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Gina, are you there? Me, yeah, I was muted, sorry. I muted myself. Gina Richman, I'm uh, off of Lomitas Lane. And my question tags on to the previous um, question. Um, certainly there's a lot of concern about the, the um, alerts, the fire alerts and evacuations. Often they're at night, you know, like nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. Are, are the roads open at that point after, you know, after the work is done for the day? Will the roads be open or is there still traffic control going on there? I'm just curious that, you know, I, I understand and appreciate the concern going into the daylight when Gel Team Gelati is working, um, but I'm, I was wondering about nighttime. Thanks, Gina. Mike, do you want to field that one? Yeah, thanks, Eric, and thanks, Gina. And um, unfortunately, the, the traffic control will be in place 24 hours a day, seven days a week um, throughout um, their, uh, the, the scope and the size of the equipment and the, and the um, uh, footprint needed to accommodate that, unfortunately, does not allow for uh, the contractor to remove them on a daily basis. Um, so it is something that um, we have taken into consideration with our plans for the evacuation. And uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, and as, as Sean reiterated, um, at, at any uh, time, uh, day or night, uh, we, we have made plans uh, to facilitate moving um, the direction of travel on Sinead from east to west um, at the direction of our emergency response uh, personnel. All right. Um, okay. All right, thank you. At this time, I see no other hands. So I'll take this opportunity to read a couple of emails that came in. The first one is from Michael on Cobblestone. His question is this, why is this work being done during the business day, morning and afternoon commute hours versus at night and weekends when negative impact on transit and traffic would be so much less? Greg, you want to take a shot at that one? Thank you, Eric. We carefully considered all the impacts regarding this project and how to best minimize them and complete the work as quickly as possible. Work within the neighborhood streets is being performed during the day. 
as is typically done because of the adverse impacts that night work has on local residents. There's been some night work and weekend work performed on Mendocino Avenue to date with additional night work planned on Mendocino Avenue in September and October. This was due to the adverse impacts of traffic on Mendocino Avenue and to local businesses. We do acknowledge that night work has and will affect those residences closer to this work. Due to the size of the bore pits and inability to move them, it's not technically possible to open the road during commute hours. Thank you. Seeing no other hands at this time, I have another email I'd like to read. This is from Mike O'Neill. My question has to do with access to Lomita Heights. Sounds like eastbound on Sinead is one way in. Then I read a post from some lady in our neighborhood that says that local traffic will be allowed west of Parker Hill. Is that correct? And finally, she said we could come and go through the emergency access point at the end of Terra Linda. Will this be opening this open this coming Monday and then 24 seven until September? And finally, the traffic out of Terra Linda to Sinead will be eastbound only. Will traffic control be in place to help people exit? Sorry, but this sounds like a rerun of the Tubbs fire evacuation, which was a nightmare. Will you be sharing statistics on traffic volume in and out of Lumina Heights? Sorry for all the questions, but with just a few days to go, I don't think that the city has done a very good, has done very good on dealing specifically with Lomita Heights traffic. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, you wanna answer that question? Those series of questions? Thanks, Eric. And, and there was a lot, and so I, I may need to um, be reminded of some of the things uh, that were mentioned if I don't capture them all. So uh, please bear with me. Um, the I'll, I'll start at the um, as it relates to local traffic between Terra Linda and um, Parker Hill. So uh, local residents will be able to access Terra Linda, um, also Cobblestone and Nielsen uh, in, in the westbound direction. Um, so uh, effectively that will be two, two direction uh, for local only, uh, westbound local only. The, the ability to exit out of Terra Linda or um, Nielsen or um, Cobblestone um, drivers there will will need to uh, make left turns for from those three streets to continue east um, uh, to to leave the area. Um, there will not be any traffic control related to um, assisting drivers getting out of those streets. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, it's basically like how it is now. Um, that's what I've made notes on. Um, could can you help me, uh, Eric, please, on, on any other comments? I think there was a question on traffic statistics or... Uh... Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, and, and also about the emergency access gate at the end of Terra Linda being open. So that will be open Monday um, uh, around 7 a.m. and will remain open continuously for the duration of the detour. Um, we do understand that it is possible that uh, there, there will be an increase in traffic on Terra Linda, and um, we have not uh, counted uh, traffic volumes before, uh, and, and we don't anticipate counting them uh, during this project. With that being said, we do uh, realize that there may be an increase in traffic, and we will be monitoring that, and um, there are some uh, additional um, measures that we could take to help mitigate um, what, what we would consider non-local traffic. Uh, also realizing though that any impacts uh, that we do in that regard will affect um, the local traffic uh, trying to get through or, or to home. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, as I'm seeing no hands raised at this time, I'd like to go to the Q&A. And I will read these. 
from Calvin. I have two questions. Will there be a temporary traffic light at Franklin, Lewis, and Crest Roads? Secondly, will construction be halted on red flag days? You may have answered some of those. Yeah, I think that was answered. Um, okay. With Calvin's verbal questions earlier. Okay. Next, I have a question from Kurt and Robin. We live near the Bollards on Andy Way now. People currently ride motorcycles through the bollards and golf carts traverse through the bollards biodirectionally. With the increase in sanctioned traffic during the detour, we are concerned for the safety of walkers and others who also use the neighborhood. Is there anything we can do to improve the safety once the bollards are removed? Or is there anywhere we can or should report current transgressions? Mike, do you have any um, guidance on that one? Yeah, thanks, Eric. So uh, this is something that we did consider and uh, we will be placing stop signs for the northbound uh, traffic from Andy Way to Baldwin Way. It is going to be a one way only. Uh, there will be do not enter signs um, for anyone trying to head southbound, um, both at the Bollards and also I'll mention at the uh, emergency access gate at Terra Linda Drive. Um, it, you know, as, as uh, for anybody that's doing um, any kind of uh, motor vehicle violation, um, any kind of illegal activities like that, um, obviously uh, call the Santa Rosa Police Department um, for anything like that. Uh, and, and we will keep, a, keep an eye um, uh, related to traffic there on Andy and Baldwin Way, just like we will on Terra Linda. Thank you. Elizabeth Bennett would like to know, will I be able to turn left from Humboldt to Sinead? Mike? Yes, that movement will be allowed. Her second question, just confirming, is there only a water line being installed on Lomitas Lane, no new sewer line? Greg, do you wanna answer that one? I'm sorry, um, could you repeat the question one more time? Yes, Elizabeth Bennett is questioning, is there only a water line being installed on Lomitas Lane and no new sewer line. Thank you. There, Lamitas Lane is getting a new water line. The water line's already been installed and the sewer line's gonna be installed in, I believe in September. But if we go to the uh, project website, SineadSewerProject.com and we'll keep that posted. We generally go about three weeks out and update it weekly. Uh, so stay tuned as far as the dates of that. Upon completion of the of the uh, replacement, um, the road will get reconstructed into a brand new road as well. Thank you. Calvin Johnson is asking, can we get the slides emailed to us? Okay. Um, yes, you can, but they will be posted tomorrow on our website, sinadesewerproject.com, the full slide deck in addition to this video. So you don't have to try to write everything down. It'll all be available that you can go pull it up tomorrow straight from the website. It's probably the easiest way, sinadesewerproject.com. Thank you. Our next question is from Tony Olibas. Will all the construction areas be repaved? not resealed, but repaved, so the roads are smooth when the project is completed. Greg? The roadways, depending on where it's at, they'll be receiving different types of treatments. Some will be a, a trench patch, some will receive an overlay, others will be reconstructed and has to do with the level of trenching that's being done. For example, on Lamitas Lane, we're reconstructing that road because there's trenching for water and sewer. So we're gonna be reconstructing that road. 
in other areas such as Chinate Road, there'll be paving around the immediate areas of the bore pits. But because like in Upper Chinate Road, it's all being done through trenchless excavation, there's minimal impacts to the surface. So depending, to answer your question, it, it depends where you're at. Um, you can always, if you live on a specific street and you wanna know what we're doing on your street, reach out to our project website, send us an email. We'd be happy to answer specific questions that you may have. Thank you. Our next question is from Brenda Diaz. To make it clear, the closure down from Nielsen towards Franklin will be closed 24 seven until September, correct? Mike? So I, I, I'll just um, clarify, the closure is from Terra Linda in the westbound direction towards Humboldt Street or Franklin. Uh, and, and that starts on Monday and continues through September. And, and that is a 24 hour closure, 24 hours continuously um, through September. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have no other hands raised and I'm going to check the Q&A one more time. And we have no new Q&As. Is there anyone that would like to ask a question? Please raise your hand or if you're calling in, dial star nine. Mary Lou, I just wanna to, to respond to a previous response that I, I said. Um, if, I, if I may do so. Um, the PowerPoint slides will be posted on our project website tomorrow. The, the video of this presentation will be posted sometime next week. I said tomorrow, but it'll be sometime next week. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. We have another speaker. We have Jeremy Nichols. Jeremy? I have enabled your permissions. Please go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make sure that people coming to bird rescue uh, from the east side of Santa Rosa will be able to travel westbound on Sinead as far as County Farm Road. Mike, can you answer that? Yes, uh, Jeremy, uh, that is correct. Um, people visiting the bird rescue will be able to come from the east westbound past the detour and turn into uh, your facility there. Thank you. Are there any other questions at this time? I see no hands. Okay. With no further questions, I would like to express my appreciation and thank members of the public and all the panelists and hosts for participating tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us, ask questions, and provide your input. Next slide, please. I want to remind everyone that the website for this project is www sewerproject.com where you can find information on construction process and status and subscribe to receive construction updates. You can also subscribe by sending a request to info at sewerproject.com. Our construction hotline is 707-385-1239. And we'd like to remind you about the city's special web page dedicated to neighborhood travel routes during an emergency. We'll leave the screen up for a few minutes. Thank you again and good night.